Greetings, Saints. Prophet is Don O'Brien, Sermon of the Lord with Don's Heartfelt Corner here. I have another prophetic word I want to share with you. God just wrote to me uh, a while back at 2.45 p.m. And um, what I'm going to share with you about is the word that he shared with me about the ground beneath your feet is opening up. I heard him say that. And uh, um, do you remember yesterday I put up a video about sinkholes. We're going to get into that. We're going to talk about some things the Holy Spirit has been showing me. Let's pray and invite the Holy Spirit here. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here to say what you're wanting me to say, Father. I just ask that you speak through me, that I'll only speak your words, Lord. We thank you for this day, Lord. We love you and praise you, Lord. Help us to relax and rest in you, Lord, knowing that you know exactly what's getting ready to take place, Lord. Our hope and our trust is in you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right, let's make sure we're online. Okay, we are online. Now, um, I don't know where to start. I'm a little stressed out. But God is in control. All right. Um, he gave me this word. This is a warning, and this is a wake-up call, and it's almost time, saints. I've been saying it. It's almost time. I just gave a word this morning that, um, that your time of departure is drawing close. I heard the Holy Spirit say that to me. But I want to talk to you about this because God spoke this to me just a little while ago. And this word that I'm about to share with you is going out to all of us, Christians and non-Christians. But he's saying to me, he said this, I want to share this with you. He said, the ground beneath your feet is opening up. This word goes out to all those that mock God and his servants. The Lord is saying, beware. You should be swallowed alive for mocking God and his servants. How dare you put the Lord thy God to test? There are those that are testing God. They do not believe, says the Lord. Now you will see that my word and my prophets are true. You know, God's been warning all of us. He's been warning the world. He's been warning even the church, and they don't want to listen. Well, you're about to see that God is real, okay? Now, I'm not going to read the whole scripture, but if you want to turn, you have a Bible, you can turn to Numbers 16, 28 through 34. Number 16, 28 through 34 is from the New Living Translation. We're talking about Kor's Rebellion. This is where um, the people tested the Lord with Moses. And Moses said in verse 28, This is how you will know that the Lord has sent me to do all these things that I have done. For I have not done them on my own. Verse 29, If these men die a natural death or if nothing unusual happens, then the Lord has not sent me. Verse 30, but if the Lord does something entirely new and the ground opens its mouth and swallows them and all their belongings, then they go down alive into the grave. Then you will know that these men have shown contempt for the Lord. Verse 31, he had hardly finished speaking the words when the ground suddenly split open beneath them. Verse 32, the earth opened its mouth and swallowed the men along with their households and all their followers who were standing with them and everything they owned. Verse 3, so they went down alive into the grave along with all the belongings. The earth closed over them, and they all vanished from among the people of Israel. All the people around them fled, verse 34. When they heard their screams, the earth will swallow us too, they cried. Now, I just put up a video. Um, huge sinkholes are now appearing throughout the United States. And I want to share a little bit with you. Um, I think it's, let me see if I, there is a little, I pulled up something to read. Um, let me see here. No, not on this one. Okay. Um, remember Paul Begley, he talked about the sun is boiling. An expert will reveal much more as a great American eclipse. Let's go to the space weather for a minute. I'm going to read it again. Here it says here. A stealth CME approaches when the sun blasts a coronal mass ejection CME into space. The event is usually announced by the bright flash of a solar flare or the collapse of a towering magnetic filament. But not always. Sometimes CME slowly materialize on their own without an instigating explosion. These are called stealth CMEs. And one of them is heading for Earth now, it says. A relatively gentle blow from the slow moving stream cloud could unsettle Earth's polar magnetic field on May 10th. That's today. All right? The sun is blank. Today the sun is blank. No sunspot. The disk of our star is completely featureless. Okay? Now, remember I told you, I believe God is going to do something that we can't do anything about. Okay? Could this be what he's getting ready to do? You know, I, it, 
I believe we're going to have wars and rumors and wars, but I, that may not be the first thing. I told you an earthquake is coming. It's going to be more than an earthquake. Wait till I share with you what I feel God is showing me. All right? It says here that this is the 31st day in 2017. The sun has been without spots. Cum cumulatively, it adds up to an entire month of spotlessness, and it's only May. For comparison, the sun was blank on 32 days in the whole. Of 2016, the accelerating pace of spotless sun is a sign that solar minimum is approaching. Um, it says here, solar minimum is yin to the yang of solar maximum, a natural part of the sun's 11-year sunspot cycle. Contrary to popular belief, solar minimum is is not boring. It says only different. It brings a time of enhanced cosmic rays, pink auroras. A collapsing something and space junk, it says. Solar firestorm yesterday, an enormous filament of mag magnetism rose above the sun's eastern limb. Um, okay. I think that's all I want to share on that here. That's, okay, that's the space weather. But I want to, I, I talk to you, um, let's pull this back up, so make sure, um, one minute. Let's pull this back up here. I, I like to make sure we're online at all times. Okay. All right. I'm trying to stay calm, saints. God is showing me things, and I'm like, is this going to happen right this minute? I mean, I'm, get, I'm getting a little nervous, but we don't need to be worried. God is in control. All right. I put up that thing about the sinkholes, okay? They're saying they're appearing throughout the United States. You know, in Florida, it's big for sinkholes here in Florida, okay? And then I, I put up, um, if you remember, um, uh, yes, just yesterday, Hanford Nuclear Storage Facility Tunnel collapsed after earthquake storm. And I put up the video by Dutch Sense for you to take a look at. It says the tunnel has collapsed at a plutonium and uranium storage facility in Washington State at the Hanford Nuclear Waste Site. Hanford is reporting 20 by 20 collapse of tunnel where two separate tunnels meet. One tunnel is 360 long and the other is 1700 long. This collapse comes just a few days after the earthquake storm was struck on the side of the Hanford property. And Dutch says he made a report and warning on the storm talking specifically about the Hanford. And you can look at it. He gave a report on uh, May 5th, not too long ago. And then we had that nuclear collapse. All right. I guess this is messed up here. We're, we're gonna go back here. I, I guess I messed up. I guess I messed up when I was printing it out. Um, here, we're talking about the sinkholes now. I found. I thought I had some information about the sinkholes. Okay. That that one I put up about. They're appearing everywhere. Here's what it says about the sinkholes. Sinkholes. A recent spate of huge sudden appearing caverns is prompting alarm in the United States. Just last week, massive holes opened up in New York City's lower Manhattan, suburban Atlanta, and San Francisco. Sinkholes are not a new phenomenon in the United States, especially in a half dozen states where the geology makes them more likely. But a recent spate of huge sudden appearing caverns is prompting, prompting alarm because they're happening in places where they shouldn't. And now it seems to be proliferating nationwide. Some experts are calling now for a national study to access the risk and potential remedies, which could involve high costs for many jurisdictions. No government entity keeps track of sinkholes from man-made causes. Most of the scientific research has focused on areas where limestone caves and natural springs create prime conditions for eastern collapses. Florida has most, see, that's what I was saying. We have a lot of earth, I mean, we have a lot of um, sinkholes here in Florida. But scientists who study natural sinkholes say the caverns from infrastructure failures are becoming a bigger problem. All right. And God was saying to me, stop mocking me. There are those mocking the Lord. Something worse will happen. You know who you are. And God is speaking to you. I know there are people on here. They don't believe something's going to happen. They're mocking God and they're mocking his servants. These are not my words. I'm speaking. The Holy Spirit is speaking through me. This will happen when we least expect it. People will say, peace, peace, and safety, and then sudden destruction. They will not be able to escape like pains on a pregnant woman. First Thessalonians 5, 1 through 3, the day of the Lord. But concerning the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. 
For you yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. We are living in perilous times. The days are evil, risky, and dangerous. That is why it's so important that we pray before going where it's so important, saints. It's not safe to just go here and go there. We need to pray and ask God what we're to do. Stay in the Lord's will. He told me that. Receive God's warning and love. Prophet John Bryan is warning you repent now and come to Christ. I told you early people will die suddenly. And some getting ready to take place. I'm going to tell you right now. On the spot will not escape. They will die still alive. Then others will be on their deathbed crying out, Jesus save me. And I'm going to stop right here and just tell you what I feel the Holy Spirit is showing me. I could be wrong, but this, I, I really feel it. In fact, I'm going to read a warning to you for, that I'm, I'm saying to President Donald Trump. This is why I feel. We've been having more earthquakes, okay? Let's go to this live earthquake map. Okay, we've been having earthquake maps. Earthquake. I don't know everything about earthquakes, okay? I'm going to let you know. I don't even know about a fault one, but God's talking to me, all right? We're, we're, these earthquakes on the fault line with the ring of fire, okay? We've been having more on the fault line, okay? And I'm going to tell you what I sense in my spirit and what I feel God is saying to me. And you pray about it. Okay, let's go to these earthquakes here and let's look. All right, Alaska's still getting them. They just had a volcano of a 5.0 and a earthquake up to 5.0 and a 4.7. Now, I don't know much about the Ring of Fire, but my husband said Alaska's on the Ring of Fire. You know, it runs, I guess, I don't know, it's Washington and California all along the Ring of Fire. You know, California, I, I told you, they're on that Ring of Fire too, as well. And, um, so we're still getting Alaska, Canada, 5.2, 4.9, 2.0 in California. I'm not reading you all of them. 4.3 in Argentina, 4.6 in Argentina. You can go to that live earthquake map and check on it yourself. I've given that to you before. But I want to tell you what I feel. And I can be wrong. That's why I said pray about it. I feel something's going to happen, saints, that we can't do anything about, okay? That the president can't do anything about, you know, we're worried about jobs, we're worried about health care. But I'm going to tell you, something's going to happen on the fault lines, and we're going to get the minute. The, the ground is going to open up, and people are going to die suddenly. Some are going to say, Jesus, save me. It's going to happen like that. The Lord showed me that just a little while ago. All right, let me read you this about the perilous times that we're in right now. 2 Timothy 3, perilous times and perilous men. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than the lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such people turn away, for of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning, verse 7, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Verse 8, now as James and James resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Then nobody wants to hear it. Now as James and James resisted Moses, so do, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds, it says, disapprove concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their father will be manifest to all as there also was. The man of God and the word of God. All right, we got more here. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, man of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, love, and perseverance. Where are we? I'm lost here. Okay, we're in verse 11. Persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch and Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. And out of them all the Lord delivered me. Verse 12, yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecutions. See, we're going to go through persecution. Verse 13, but evil men and impostors will grow from worse and worse, deceived, both, deceived and being deceived. 
but you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of knowing from who you have learned them. And that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, reproof for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. I read that kind of fast. Sorry, saints. You can read it. 2 Timothy 3, perilous times and perilous men. Now, I wrote, wrote a letter to President Trump. I'm going to share it with you, okay? Because this is what I feel is coming, saints. Okay? God keeps telling me. Something's about to happen, okay? I'm t I'm t been telling you about the earthquakes, okay? But it's gonna happen, boom, like that, suddenly, and you you and I are not gonna expect that. If you don't know Christ, you need to give him your heart and life now. Don't wait, don't wait, don't wait till you're on your deathbed and you're saying, Jesus, save me. And some of you won't even have another chance. You're gonna die instantly if you do not know Christ. Pray and ask Jesus to save you. Come near your heart. The prayer is up on the the prayer, uh, on the screen, we prayed it before. I've talked about it before. I'm not going to force you to come to Christ. I'm going to keep giving the word, proclaiming. We're supposed to. That's what we're supposed to do. I believe we're going to keep doing it until Jesus returns. Okay. I'm going to read you this letter. I want you to pray with me. That um, It's going to get in the President Donald Trump's hands. I'm going to send it in the mail. I'm going to put it on the website. And this is what I said. It's a warning to the President. Dear President Donald Trump, it is time you make an announcement to the American people and tell them what is happening on the fault line. The fault line is eroding, I hear the Lord say. It's giving way. I heard him say it. it's eroding. And I looked up the word erode, to wear something away by erosion, caused to diminish or deteriorate. And here's the fault. We're going to talk about it. Because I don't know much about this. This is all new for me. I don't, you know, I don't get into earthquakes. But, but it says here, in geology, a fault is a planar fracture or discontinuity in a volume of rock across which there has been significant displacement as a result of rock mass movement. Large faults within the earth crust result from the action of plate tectonic forces. So are those plates are moving. I've given you a link so you can read this. With the largest forming the boundaries between the plates, such as subduction zones or transformed faults, energy releases... Energy release associated with rapid movement on active fault is the cause of most earthquakes. Hmm. Let me read that again. Where is it? Energy release associated with rapid movement on active fault is the cause of most earthquakes. So we see those tectonics moving. Vault plane is the plane that represents the fracture surface of a fault. A fault trace or fault line is the intersection of a fault plane with the ground surface. A fault trace is also the line commonly plotted on geologic maps to represent a fault. Since faults do not usually consist of a single clean fracture, she also used the term fault zone referring to the zone of complex deformation associated with the fault plane. I, see, I don't understand all of this. Maybe some of you that is into all this may understand. But I'm going to let you read this because it's interesting. Um, it says here, a strike slip where the offset is predominantly a horizontal parallel to the fault trace. It talks about a dip slip, an oblique slip. See, I don't understand all of this. The strict fault are similar to normal faults, but the fault plane curves. Ring fault, it says. I'm going to let you look at it because I don't understand all of this, okay? Uh, so I did put the link up there for you to take a look at. Let's get back to this letter. I was reading. Let's, all right, so let me start over again, okay? Dear President Donald Trump, it's time to make an announcement to the American people and tell them what's happening on the fault line. The fault line is eroding, I hear the Lord say, is giving way. President Donald Trump, we as a nation need to seek God now, I hear him say. There are many people that will be swallowed up from the breaking of this fault line that is caused by earthquakes and volcanoes. And I feel the Holy Spirit just showed me that. Something's getting ready to happen. Is that what's next? We're going to see the ground open up and people are going to get swallowed? I mean, I'm serious, saints. Pray about it. Could this happen in the United States? 
All right, I, I believe it's going to happen, but I mean, is this what's going to happen right this minute? I don't know. God keeps telling me something's coming. He's been giving me all these prophetic words, and they may not happen all right this minute, okay? But they are coming. I really, truly believe that. I said here, warn the people, says the Lord. Stop worrying about the economy. More jobs and health care. There will be no jobs or health care when this occurs. We as a nation must prepare how we plan to survive the coming days. God is warning you as the Commander-in-Chief of the United States, please listen to God's prophets that are speaking. My name is Prophetess Donna Burr and I've sent letters in the mail to the White House and placed them up on your White House YouTube website. Hear the voice of the Lord. Be wise and prepare, says the Lord. These are not my words, but God has shown me what is coming. A prophetic sermon is called to warn the people of what is coming. I'm a prophetic servant of the Lord that God is using to warn the nation of America. And we've read Ezekiel 13, 16 through 19. And I'll just read it again. Ezekiel 3, 16 through 19. And at the end of seven days, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from the mouth, you shall give them warning from me. See, if I don't tell you and I don't say anything, God's going to hold me accountable. It says here, verse 18, If I say to the wicked, you surely die, and you give him no warning nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way in order to save his life, that wicked person shall die for his iniquity. But his blood I will require your hand. See, if I don't say anything, I'm going to answer. That's why, you know, I may sound rough to some people, but you know what? I'm going to answer. If I don't do what I feel in my heart that God's wanting me to do. All right. Verse 19. But if you warn the wicked and he does not turn from his wickedness or from his wicked way, he shall die for his iniquity, but you will have delivered your soul. See, it's so important that we warn people. And that goes for you, too. You don't have to be a prophetic servant. If God's telling you to warn somebody, warn them. All right. And then it's, I have on here, he shows prophets in advance what is going to happen. Amos 3, 7 through 8, when the Lord God decides to do something, he will first tell his servants of prophets. When a lion roars, people are frightened. When the Lord God speaks, a prophet must prophesy. Please take God's warning seriously. We are living in the end days of the Bible that God warned us of what would be happening. Matthew 24, 6 through 7, and, then, and you will hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For a nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. You will not be able to handle this on your own, says the Lord. The days ahead will be very difficult. May the Lord find you men and women that can help lead the nation of America back to God. There needs to be an awakening of repentance for the Lord has spoken. And then I saw my name. All right. We need to have repentance. This nation needs to come back to God now. It's time we warn the people. It's time our president gets out there and tells them what's happening. Could that be why the government has all these coffins? I mean, I'm just wondering. They, they bought all these coffins. Are they expecting a natural disaster or something? Okay? And why did I say everything's going to be flat? It's not going to look the same. A change is coming. We're, we're about to see something. All right? And I read this from earlier, but I'm going to read it again. A big shaking is coming. God's about to shake the heavens and earth. Whatever is not him will not stand. He's getting ready to purify us by his mighty hand. Keep your feet planted on the solid rock. Do not listen to people when they laugh and mock. They refuse to listen and ignore the warning signs. But we are Christ's ambassadors here to bring God's word. Whether they choose to listen and allow us to be heard. Do not stop telling others what is to come. Have bonus and determination touching some. There will be others that will persecute you, but the day will soon be here. When Jesus Christ, our master, will appear. Every eye will see him in the sky. Their hearts will be humbled and begin to cry. Don't be like those that died in the flood. They thought it was a game. God washed them away. They died in shame. There is still time for you. Jesus Christ is God's only begotten Son. Give your heart to Him, the Holy One. With Him we have eternal life. No more pain, sour, or strife. And there's still time for you. Don't wait. Don't wait. The prayer is up on the screen. You can pray and receive Christ in your heart, but don't wait. 
Hebrews 12, 26 through 29. At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he's promised once more, I will shake now the earth, but also the heavens. Verse 27, the words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken, that is created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we're receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful, and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for God is a consuming fire. Let's pray, saints. Father, we just come together as a body of believers, Lord. Father, I believe this word you've given me, Lord. I don't know if it's coming right this minute, but it may be. I, I believe something is about to take place, Father. Father, I pray that President Donald Trump, Lord, would warn the people, Father, and that he will get these letters that I'm sending, Lord. Because I am doing your will. You know my heart, Father. And you have called me forth to warn the president, warn the nation, warn the people of what's coming, Lord. Father, I pray that, that they would take heed and listen, Lord, and obey and prepare for what is coming, Lord. And not worry about the economy and jobs and things, Lord, that really, truly are not important. Lord. We need to really, really think about how we're going to survive in the days ahead, Lord. So I'm praying for... President Donald Trump, that you soften his heart, Lord. And if there's anything in his heart, Lord, that he will not listen, Lord, open up his ears, that he will hear clearly, Lord, receive the word of the Lord. I pray your presence and power will be on that letter, will be on this video, Lord, that they'll sense your spirit, Lord. It's not me. It's about you, Jesus. We want you to be glorified, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for watching over all of us. Well, we're not going to worry, Lord. We pray for those that are on the fault line, Lord. Lord, I pray that if they don't know you, that they'll call upon you and become saved, Lord. And that those that are mocking you will stop mocking you, Lord. And stop mocking your servants, Lord. That you're going to show them that you are real, Lord. Father, we pray for salvation in our nation. We pray for a mighty revival, Lord. There is so much happening, Lord. And we're not going to be afraid. We're not going to worry, Lord. Our hope and our trust is in you, Lord. We thank you for this day. Thank you that you're watching over us, even with the enemies, Lord. The wars and rumors of wars, there's so much going on, Lord. We get our eyes up on you, Lord. We thank you for being good to us in this nation, Lord. We thank you for the food, the water, the clothing, Lord. You've been good to us, Lord. May we not forget to offer up a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, Lord. Whether No matter what we're going through, good times or bad, Lord. You're good to us, Lord. You have been very good to us, Lord. Other nations don't even have what we have, Lord. We want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Praise you, Lord. We love you and we adore you. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. I wanted to share that word with you because I want you to know something is coming, saints. I'm not making this up. I know. I spend a lot of time with the Lord, and he just drops these in my spirit. You know, sometimes I don't even ask him. He just gives it to me. And then there are times I'm asking, and he don't say nothing. So I do know something's coming. Okay, but could this be what we're about to see? You know, I've told you about the sun, and, you know, I don't know everything about the solar flares and the sun and the cosmic rays or the fault lines, you know. I'm just sharing with you what God is putting on my heart. I'm learning more myself. The Holy Spirit is teaching me. All right, well, I want you to know we love you. We're praying for you. Keep us in your prayer. And if I have another word or something, I'll come on here, all right? But stay close to the Lord. He loves you. And Keep praying and seeking him. Until we meet again, Prophet Stone and Brian, Sermon of the Lord with John's Heart Book. God bless you.